On today's episode, I'm working with Topaz Studio 2. I'm working with one particular filter to do two different types of adjustments, and that is the Precision Detail Filter. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today, I'm working out of Photoshop, and I'm using Topaz Studio 2 as a plug-in, and I'm using one specific filter, and that is the Precision Detail Filter. Now, I'm going to be using that filter to to give me two different type of results. And you'll see what I mean by that shortly, but I'll be working on three different images today. I got this one of the butterfly, some really cool flowers here, and also this piece of clover. But we're gonna start out with the butterfly image first. Now on all the images, I've duplicated my background layer, called them Topaz Studio 2 Precision Detail, so we can work non-destructively. First off, let's go ahead and launch Topaz Studio 2. I'm just coming up here to Filter and down to Topaz Studio 2, giving that a click and we will launch it. Now the Precision Detail Filter is one of my all-time favorite filters in Topaz Studio 2, and you get to it by coming up here to Add Filter. Give that a click, and it's in this Essential section. It is an Essential Filter, by the way. I use it constantly in pretty much every image I ever uh, edit. I pretty much use it all the time. But let's come down here to Precision Detail. And the reason I like it so much is it breaks down your detail into overall small detail, medium, and large detail. Also has sharpening in here. But I mainly use these sliders right here, okay? And then you also have, not only do you have overall detail, but you have shadow detail. So you can just work on shadows and just work on highlights. So it is very good at really breaking down all those different ranges, you know, overall shadows, highlights, small, medium, and large. As I said at the start of the video, I'm going to use the precision detail filter in two ways. The first way I'm going to show you is how to add really nice detail to just portions of the image. In other words, not globally, but more locally. In other words, drawing your viewer's eye to the area or the part of the image that you want them to see. And that's very important when you're crafting images. You want people to look at the, at the parts of the image that you want them to look at. And adding detail is a way that you can do this. What I want to do is add some extra detail to this butterfly, a decent amount of detail, just a little bit of detail to this area of the flower right here. Now I feel this portion of the flower looks really good and sharp already but I just want you really to come into this butterfly. So what I'll do is we'll start out in overall. Now overall is what I generally use. Sometimes I'll use shadows and highlights, but mainly overall detail. But I'm gonna start out with the small. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here and I'm gonna to start to take this overall detail slider and move it to the right. And can you see that detail starting to pop in there when I do that? And now I'm going to go to the overall medium and let's add a little bit of medium detail. Now let me pull this the whole way to the right so you can really see what it's doing. Okay. And I don't want to go too crazy here. And I've, you'll find with this uh, particular filter that a little bit of movement goes a long way for you. So be very careful with it. Now let's see if the overall large detail is going to help us here. Um... You know, a little of it might be good because I'm, I'm actually looking at some of the dark areas up here on the butterfly. Take a look up there as I pull this across. You see that they're getting some of the dark areas are getting a little darker and I kind of like that. Now, if I just click anywhere on this canvas, left click it with the mouse, you can see the before and the after. So you can see that right there. Now, let me just play with the shadow detail. I'm just looking up in this area right in here. I'm going to take this small uh, shadow detail, move it to the right. See how it's getting a little sharper over here? It's actually like doing a bit of sharpening when I do that. I don't want to go too crazy there, but I think I might just want to add just a tiny wee bit of that, just like so. Again, I'm going to left click on my canvas before and after. Now let me go ahead and zoom back out. Now I hate what's happening to the rest of the image. So I'm going to use a layer mask to uh, help me here. So I'm just going to come here and click on this layer mask. And see these three dots right here? Click right here. And what we're going to do is invert the layer mask. So when I click invert, the layer mask will turn black, meaning it's going to hide all my adjustments. 
Now that I've hid everything, I want to reveal back just the uh, areas that I want to add detail to. And to do that, I'm going to use a brush tool right here. Now, there's a bunch of different tools in here, and I have other videos on my YouTube channel showing you how all this stuff works, so you can go back and watch those. But I'm going to use a simple brush today. Now, I'm going to click on brush, and you'll notice here, right now we have a black brush. See the swatch of paint here? It's black. If I take this transparency slider and move it to the right, you'll notice it's going through various shades of gray. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stop here and wherever I paint, I'll be applying 49% of that detail adjustment. And if you recall, I said this area of the flower, I don't wanna add the full amount of the detail back, but I just want some and 49% might be good. I'm gonna go ahead and paint right here. And now when I release the brush, you can see that's 49%. I've added 49% of that detail from the precision detail adjustment right there. Now on the butterfly itself, I want to add a full 100%. So I'm going to take this transparency slider. Now I can stop anywhere in between here and add various amounts of detail onto that butterfly. But I'm going to go the whole way up to 100% and try that. And I'm going to make my radius of my brush a little bit smaller. So we have a radius adjustment here. We can adjust the softness of the brush here. And then we have edge wear technology, which I really like, which will grab the edges of the butterfly. And that's some fantastic technology that is pretty much exclusive to Topaz Studio 2. So I really like this. So I'm gonna come here and paint inside of the butterfly. And if I go outside the butterfly a little bit, that edge wear technology will lock on for me. When I release the brush, you can see that detail is on there. Now, if I felt that was too much detail, I might say it might be a little too much so I can take this transparency and pull it back a little bit. Let's pull it back to about 88% and I can paint over it again. And now I'll be reducing that amount of detail just a little wee bit. So you don't have to settle for what you first put on there. You can experiment and that is really something that you want to do. So now I have 88% of that adjustment on there. Now let me go ahead and left click right here on my canvas. Here's the before and here's the after before and after. So just that little bit of extra detail. Now our eye is drawn more into the butterfly. Now this antler right here, I want to sharpen it up a little bit and this area of the butterfly back here, I don't know what this is called. The swallowtail? I don't know. I'm just guessing. If anybody knows what that is, let me know. I'm going to make my radius a lot smaller here. And with that uh, edge aware technology turned on, as you can see, it's on. You can shut it off by clicking right here. I'm just going to come and paint right down this antler right here and come back here and paint on these areas back here. And I've added that sharpening back there as well. And that's really all I want to do. Now we can also come up here to precision detail and see the little eye. We can click this. We can shut just that filter off. There's the before and there's the after. Now that's exactly what I wanted to have done on this image. So I can come up here now and click accept and that sends us right back into Photoshop. Here is my before and here is my after. So the job is done on that one. I added some more emphasis into the butterfly and into the center of this flower here. And also you have this layer right here so you can shut this layer off and on or you could take this opacity if you felt you went a little too strong here. You can pull this opacity here back a little bit too if you want to. So you have all that different flexibility. That's one of the reasons I like working from Photoshop and we can even add more layer masking if we need to. But that's the first example. Now let's move on to our second example. Now I'm going to use the precision detail filter to add detail and also to take detail away. So that was the second thing I wanted to use the precision detail for was to remove detail. And on this particular image, I want to add a little extra detail on the sharper flowers, but on the background, I wanted to remove some detail just to give it a little more dreamy, ethereal look. Let's go ahead and launch uh, Topaz Studio 2 and we will get started. I'm going to move a little quicker on this one now that you see how these sliders work in here. Let's come right up here. Let's add a filter, precision detail. The first thing I'm going to do is remove detail. I'm going to use precision detail two times and you can stack these filters up, which is something I do all the time and it can be very effective. And you'll see here how I use two different precision detail filters, one to remove detail and one to add detail. But first off, let's remove detail. I'm just going to work with overall detail. So I'm going to go to the small detail, take this detail slider, and move it the whole way to the left. 
You see how soft the image has gotten? And then I'm going to take the medium detail and I'm going to start to move it to the left watching the image. I'm just looking for a nice dreamy quality, which it looks pretty good right now. But I'll just take a little bit of the medium detail and slide it slightly to the left, just a little bit. And I think that's as far as I want to go. Here's the before and here's the after. Now I'm going to use a layer mask to uh, bring back the detail in areas that I want to bring detail back. So I'm going to leave this layer mask white. I'm going to click uh, on the brush tool and transparency. I want it to be black because I want to reveal detail back. And I just have to adjust my brush size accordingly. And I think that's a good brush size. Uh, I can leave the edge wear on. This particular flower, I definitely want to bring the detail back. Now, maybe not over the entire flower, but mainly the sharper parts, like right there. And there's a little bit of extra detail back here. These are out of focus. But this area here, I want my viewer's eye to be drawn into this area right here. And... I'm going to bring some of this detail back in here because this is relatively sharp, this flower down here. And you know what? On this one, I don't think I want as much detail brought back. So let me go ahead and take this transparency slider and slide it up about halfway and then paint over this again. I want some of that uh, detail brought back, but not all of it because I don't want your eye to really come here. I want your eye to be up here and that's again what I want to train my viewers eye to go where I want it to go I'm gonna bring a little bit of this detail back up in here okay maybe a little bit of this now I'm still at like around 58 percent and maybe right here and that's all I want and then I'm gonna add some extra detail in this area now just take a look at my layer mask you can see there's black here meaning the full amount of detail was brought back and these grayer areas, less of the amount of detail has been brought back, like in these flowers here and here. And I hope you can understand that I'm using this transparency slider to make my adjustments. In other words, I can let just a little bit of detail back or let all the detail come back. Because remember, I use this filter to remove detail. And now I'm using the mask to bring detail back. And now I'm going to go ahead and click Add Filter. I'm going to grab another precision detail filter. This time I want to do some sharpening. And I'm mainly looking at this flower right here when I make my adjustments. I'm going to take my overall small detail and start to move this to the right. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see that watch this flower here. I don't want to overdo it because remember I said a little bit goes a long way because you see that. I can go crazy here, but I don't want to go that far. And so detail, I'm adding detail. It's like kind of sharpening, really. It's adding sharpness to the image here. So I'm adding that little extra bit of detail just to make that flower pop out. And I might see what a little bit of uh, medium, overall medium detail does. See, I can go crazy there, but I just want a tiny wee bit of it. Just a little bit. Now let me go ahead and zoom back out. Now, I'm going to go ahead and grab another layer mask. And this time I'm going to invert the layer mask because I don't want to, you know, I've got rid of that detail previously with the previous filter. Now I don't want it to come back, but I just want to let detail pop on that flower. So I'm going to invert this mask. So let's invert it. And then I'll simply grab a brush and take my transparency. Let's try 100%, take it the whole way up to 100%. And I'm going to go ahead and paint that detail on this flower right in this area right here and we can see the red overlay where i'm painting release it and you see that detail comes back and that's really the only place i want the detail to come back because i want your eye to be drawn into here now i think that's too much so i'm going to go ahead and pull this transparency back or you know what i could come up to the precision detail filter and maybe pull back i could do it either way i could pull back with transparency paint over this and less of that detail would show or I could come back into the filter and let's go ahead and do that let's zoom in a little bit and what I think I'll do is just take some of this overall small detail and bring it back just a little wee bit I think I overdid it so there's more than one way of doing things again I could work with a layer mask and let less of that show through or I could go back and readjust so you can do it any way you want but let's click this eye. Here's the before and here's the after. But see that little bit of extra detail pops through. And now our eyes are drawn right in there. And sometimes I make the mistake of overdoing these adjustments. And a little bit goes a long way. But I just want my viewer, again, here's the before and here's the after. I hope that's showing up on the video. But it's really 
causing my eye to go right into that flower. And I love that nice dreamy area all in the background. And that's all I wanted to do here. So I'm going to come over and click accept. That'll send us right back into Photoshop. Here is the before and here is the after. I love the dreamy background. I love my eye being drawn to this sharpness of this flower here. I like it. It kind of looks like uh, some fireworks going off. Happy with this image. Now we move to the last image, and that's this one here. And this one, it's sharp enough. The clover here is sharp enough. The only thing I want to do is pull back some detail on the background. And I hope you're seeing here that that detail, precision detail filter, is not only good for adding detail, it's also super great for removing detail. For the third and final time, I'll launch Topaz Studio 2, and we will get started. Now, we're going to remove some of the detail from the background. I know it's already soft, but I can get some more softness out of it. And I really enjoy my soft backgrounds on my flower photography. So let's grab another filter, Precision Detail Filter. And again, we're going to go with Overall. We're going to take the Overall Small, take this the whole way to the left. Now we're going to take the overall medium, and I'm going to be a lot more aggressive on this one to really pull a lot of that detail out back there. I think I'll even take it the whole way. Just get it really soft back there. Here's the before and here's the after. Now I've, I've ruined the detail on my clover, so I'm going to grab that back. Let's go up and click on this layer mask, and we're going to leave it with white reveal all, but we're going to get a brush and leave it on black because we want to reveal this back here we don't want this to be soft i'm going to take my radius and make it a little bit smaller i'm going to leave my softness where it is leave my edge wear turned on i'm going to paint around the edge and let the edge technology edge wear technology take care of the edges for us so we'll start around here we can be a little loose and sloppy here it doesn't really matter that edge wear technology is really great so just paint around here Okay, like that, and then paint on the interior of the clover. I love the red overlay because it really lets you see where you're painting. Now, if I wanted to get a bigger brush, I'd have to lift off, but I don't want to lose my overlay, so I'm going to continue to paint with that smaller brush. It's okay. And then I'm going to, um, there's my detail back, and as you can see, it grabbed, along the, grabbed around the edges perfectly. I'm going to make my brush radius a little bit smaller, and I'm just going to start here and paint down right down the stem and just like that I got my detail back and it is just that easy. So here is my before and here's my after. Just that little extra softness back there I think really sets this image off. And sometimes it's just the little things. Pay attention to the little details. You wouldn't think they matter but believe me they do matter. Now if you're happy with it just click accept and that sends us right back into Photoshop. Here is our before Take a minute or two to study this, not a minute, maybe a few seconds. There's the before and here is the after. But that little extra dreaminess, I think, really makes this image. Let me know what you think. Leave comments and questions. I'd love to hear from you. Well, there it is, everyone. Give that precision detail filter a try. Use it for localized adjustments to draw emphasis to the parts of the image that you want your viewer to see. Now, this works on any type of photography. It's great for flower photography, macro photography. It's great for landscape photography when you really want to pull out trees and rocks and water. Whatever you want to do, it's a great technique. So try it on all different types of photography. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.